Amen. Yeah, yeah, I got this. Good morning. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Good? You, you notice I did that real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good to be in the house of the Lord this afternoon, isn't it? Good to be here. Suppose it doesn't really matter what time it is, does it? You know, as long as we're together worshiping the Lord and serving God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So um, I had, I've been trying to, I've got a couple sermons that, I've, that I'm wanting to preach in the next uh, short while, um, but I just haven't had the chance to kind of preach them because the Lord keeps leading me other ways. And because it was, and because it was a baptismal today, I thought I better, I better, better wrap it up as as a baptismal, you know, type of thing. Talk about, you know, what it is to be saved and born again. There she is. Good to see you. Woo! Good to have you tonight, today. Amen. Uh, just continue to pray for my daughter Sarah. Uh, she had a seizure on um, Thursday. And uh, we, we, we ended up, we were, me and my wife and myself were going to Carousel on the drive. We were driving to Carousel. We got up to the bypass, Great Eastern Highway and um, Row Highway, I think it is. And uh, we got a phone call from my grandson who was watching his mother have a seizure. And he was in a panic, said, please, Pop, come, come, come. So uh, it was a God thing because we were driving to Carousel, so she's in High Wycom, and we're in Swanview, so we were able to swick, swiftly, swick, swiftly, swiftly, swiftly uh, zip out and get to her place, and she, uh, when I got there, she was on her side, and then I witnessed her to having another seizure. So we don't know what's going on there. Um, I just got really angry, got angry with the devil got angry with uh, just whatever it was that was happening to her. So um, you don't want to see that with your kids, do you? You don't want to see that with anyone, but especially your children. So, um, and then uh, she's, she was raised off the hospital. We, I picked her up that night, um, late, late that night, brought her back home, she took her home. We had the kids overnight, um, and then... Um, uh, just today, <clears throat> uh, she was getting ready to come to church, and uh, uh, she had another seizure So this afternoon, so she wasn't able to come. So just pray for her. Just, what we want to know is we just want to know what it is, why, why it's been caused. Because when the, when the medics came and the, the ambulance came uh, on Thursday, they read her vitals. She was back to normal. Everything else was fine. Everything was good, you know, like blood pressure, everything else was fine. So there's something going on here. Uh, we don't know what's happening in there. The, the, the things aren't firing properly or whatever. Or it could just be the devil. Don't throw them in the water yet, Mary. Keep them out of the water. She's showing the kids the water. <laughs> um, and so just keep praying for my daughter, Sarah, Okay. Um, yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah, okay. We want to pray for that, too. Well, why don't we just go ahead and pray for that? I mean, we prayed for Puya. I didn't get a chance to pray for him, but she did. And uh, let's just pray for them. Let's just pray right now. I'm pray for Anamika. How's it going? Yep. Okay, good. Okay, I didn't hear much of that, so. <laughs> do you want to talk on the mic? You okay to do that? We're family here, so we can do this. Yeah. Okay? Let everybody know where you're at. Can you hear me? Okay, there we go. So the calcium levels are starting to get better. Parathyroid hormones kicking in, so that's great. So I'm reducing the amount of medication, but my voice is still not there, and it's really hard when you're a singer and you want to sing to everything you hear on the radio, and you ah, and it's just gone, and it's really, really difficult, and it's very painful. It just feels like 
um, basically someone's just strangling me the entire time. Okay. But we'll get there. Thank you. Amen. Alison, yes? Multiple deaths. What kind of deaths? Just don't know what? That's fine. Up, up and mundaring. Okay, we need to pray for these things. Don't, don't you feel, I think from the beginning of this year, it's felt like just every, we're just under attack. Just there's just crazy things going on. Marissa? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it just feels like the whole world's under some kind of attack. I, yeah, there you go. So you know, you know it was my birthday today, right? So everybody already knew that, and uh, somebody daubed on me, so there you go. Well, I woke up this morning because I have a, a carrying job that I do on Sunday mornings also. Got up this morning, and I go out to my car, and my passenger window is smashed. So somebody's broken into my car. Hang on. I'm going to catch this just in case. Hello? Hello, is this Stephen? Yes, it is. Yeah, how you going, mate? Senior Constable Goldthorpe from Perth Forensics, part of uh, WA Police. Yep. Um, just phoning up in relation to the burglary you've uh, reported. Yep. I'm, I'm, just in a, I'm just in a meeting right now, but I can put you on to my wife. How's that sound? Okay. okay, yep. So that's part of what happened to us this morning. So happy birthday to me. So uh, my car was broken into. There's nothing in my car to steal, so, um, but just made a mess of my car. Have to go buy another window, glass window. And so, uh, and then um, I went to work uh, about... Uh, 7.30 I think it was and then ultimately when I when I got home later on around about 11 o'clock Wendy was there and uh, she walks into the bedroom and she discovers that some of her jewelry is stolen and her purse out of her bag was stolen so we think what happened is and she was at home she was there uh, she was just in the kitchen area which is kind of separate from our front area and so, uh, again, happy birthday to me. So, I, I feel like the devil doesn't like me. Well, maybe, I hope so. Anyhow, there you go. So, pray for me. Pray for us. And it's just, it's just, it's, it's just one of those things. Um, we, we, you know, what happens when these things are happening to you? You start to go, well, what have I done wrong? Don't you think that you've done wrong? You th- that's, that's the old way of thinking. That was the way that I used to think for years. I used to think I was doing something wrong. Well, I, I know from the Bible, and I know from what I've learned from God and learned from the Bible over the years, it's not that I've done anything wrong at all. You know, I, I know where I'm at with my walk with God. I haven't been sinning. I know I haven't been sinning, and I can openly say that to you. I've not been doing anything wrong. Maybe the occasional swear word when something happens to me, but would that be normal? Do you think God would be upset with me because I did that, and he'd take his, take his hand off of me because of a swear word or two? Or because I get angry with somebody? You know, I called those guys a couple of names. I don't know who they are, but I just said, you, why'd you do that to my car, and why'd you do that to my wife? Amen? Um, so, sheesh. I think the Old Testament was worse than the day and age in which we live. Because the day and age in which we live they would just go out and kill their enemy. So we don't do that in the New Testament. Can you say amen? 
We just don't do that. So, um, so I've been working on this for a little bit, this, this message also. And that, that's just, just uh, I want to call it the blessings of justification. Okay? Justification is just a big spiritual Christian word. And it, and it just means that you're, you're, you're made right with God. Okay? So the moment you ask Jesus Christ to come into your life, you are made right with God. Okay? So there's no barriers now. There's no obstacles between you and God. Okay? He's not angry with you. He's not upset with you. In fact, if he was really upset with us, we would not be here right now. None of us. Okay? And if he wasn't gracious, if he wasn't kind, if he wasn't loving and caring, he wouldn't have never sent his son to die for us. So he's none of those things that religion sometimes tells us that we are. Because we're not. Okay? He, he died in our place. Okay, he died for us. He gave his life for us. So we could be born again and we could be made justified before God. I say it like this. Justification or justified means just as if I've never sinned. That's a good way to remember it. Okay? So have you ever heard that word? If whenever you hear that word justification or just being justified, you've been justified... Think of it like that, just as if I've never sinned, okay? Do you believe that about yourself? Now that you've asked Jesus into your life, do you believe that it's like he looks at you as if you've never sinned? Just have to remember it, because that's how he sees you, okay? He, that's, the, that's pure and simple. That's exactly how he sees you. He doesn't see your sin. He doesn't remember your sin. He's taken all of your sins and he's cast them in the depths of the sea. As far as the east is from the west, he doesn't even take it into an account. Okay? From the moment you ask Jesus into your life, you didn't have to do anything else to be justified. You didn't have to read your Bible. You didn't have to pray. You didn't have to fast. You didn't have to come to church. We do that to hear a message like today and be a part of a family, a loving, caring family that love one another, right? So you, you are standing before God. You are sitting here today before God just as if you've never sinned. All right. Now, I don't know about you, but there's blessings that come with that. And in Romans chapter 5, we're going we're gonna to do some reading from this. And uh, let's just kind of go through it. And when we stop, we stop. Okay? We stop when we stop. You okay with that? If you get finished before me, you can go. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, who's it going to get to, to Paul? You want to read first? You read first for me. Uh, if I stop you at some point in time, I'm going to say something on that. But you go ahead and start. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God for our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Okay, stop there for a minute. So in verse 2, he, he, well, actually in verse 1 and verse 2, he gives us a couple of, he gives us three really good things, okay, that happens when therefore we've been justified. So what is that? Therefore we've been justified by what? By faith. By faith. Did you do any works? Did you work at it? Did you give a million dollars to the Lord by now? Did you fast and pray? What did you do? So just by trust and faith in Christ and what he did for you, you were born again. You were justified. Correct? Okay. So what did that bring to you? Peace with God. 
The Bible says that we were at enmity with God. We were at war with God. Our sin caused the war. And so we were always fighting against Him. Have you ever met people in the world today and it's like they are fighting with God? Did you ever fight with God? Like you were at war with Him. No, I don't, no, no, you know. And I've, I've, I've questioned, I thought, wow, why don't they just give their heart to the Lord? Oh, oh, this, this Jesus. You know, out of all the religions in the world, it, it's like Christianity is the one that everybody hates. To, to, hates. Isn't it weird? Even the Muslims who love to kill people, we're okay with them. But us, the moment we make a stand for God or Jesus, all of a sudden, because they're at war with God, their sin separates them and causes them to be at war with God. And so what happens is all of a sudden, once you by faith have received Christ into your life, what happens, you now have peace with God. See, God was never warring against you. In fact, he was always planning to get your, bring salvation to you. We were warring against him. We were fighting against him. So we got peace with God. That's number one. We have peace with God. Secondly, we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. So we stand in grace. What's grace? Can anybody tell me what grace is? Unmerited favor. So did you earn that? No. So that's the favor of God. So again, let me just repeat. We have somehow been taught in the Christian world or in the world today, in Christianity, in church or whatever, that, 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 that you have to earn God's favor. You don't have to do anything to get his favor. He's already unleashed his favor towards you. In fact, I think when you strive to try to gain his favor, it's like you end up losing his favor. I don't know why, but it just seems to kind of make it not work. Because it's received by faith. Simple, simple, simple faith. I mean, I call it simple faith, but sometimes faith, working faith out is hard too. But we stand in grace. Grace is another fantastic definition to it. Does anybody know what the other definition of grace is? God's Oh, well, excuse me, Miss Bible Scholar. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, God's riches at Christ's expense. I now do like, that's like the justification, just as if I've never sinned. I like that one. Can anybody remember that one? Hold that away in your thinking. Yeah, that's actually unmerited favor. At his expense. Oh, that's good. Not my expense, his expense. Wow, that's love. Can you say amen? amen. And so, so grace in which we stand. Okay, so grace is this other truth. And that is the empowering presence of God. The empowering presence of God. Now, when you are struggling in your life, when you are struggling to kind of get through things, he bestows upon us by faith, by our faith, he bestows upon us his empowering presence. This is an ability to actually accomplish what we can't do within ourselves. Can you say amen? It's linked to unmerited favor, but it's actually empowering presence. And I don't know about you, but there are times 
There are times, and have been many, 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 many times in my life where I've experienced his empowering presence in my life to actually overcome things and to actually succeed in areas of my life where normally I couldn't succeed. And I felt him taking over. Has anybody ever felt him take over? Wow. He took over and just helped you through it. Okay? And that is released. I like what he's saying here. He says, access by faith. We have access into this. So that doesn't mean that it always comes natural to us. You have to access it. You have to move into it. Can you say amen? You have to open the door to it by faith in Christ. Amen? Amen. And what do we do with it? But we stand first, right? (laughs) And then the third thing here is really good. And rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So how many of you know one day we're going to be standing in the glory of God? Okay. Um, I'm actually 63 today. That's very young. It's very young. Okay? And I know I don't look 63. I know I look a lot younger than that. (laughs) Okay. But the older I get, the sooner I'm going to be in heaven. And the pains and the sorrows and the hurts and the mishaps and the stealing and the things that happened to me on my 63rd birthday are going to be gone. And everything I own, everything I have is going to be left behind. But I have a hope that is greater than all of that, and the hope is that I'm going to spend eternity with Jesus Christ. I'm going to be in glory. Can you say amen? amen? This is twofold thought. The twofold thought is not only will I be in glory with God, but the glory of God even right now. As I, I'm being changed, the Bible teaches us that we're being changed from glory. Turn to your neighbor and tell him they're shining right now. Because that's what glory is. It's Josh, you're shining. You're shining, even though the cap is hiding some of the glory, okay? It's like a veil that Moses had. (laughs) Are you with me? It's the glory of God that is bestowed upon us. The word hope, does anybody know what the word hope is? I've told you what the word hope is before in the past, but can you remember it? It Has has hope us in your other book, okay? Okay. Okay, when you think of hope in, in the world today, right now, if you think of hope, what do you think? Well, I'm hoping or I'm wishing. Is, is, is that what you think? Sorry? Unseen, okay. Yes, it is. It's not faith. Because hope is something different. I mean, it, okay. Is it wishful thinking? Sort of, yes, no, could be, maybe, I don't know. Confidence? Okay, Diane, she's found it in her notebooks. Good. Hope, hope, the biblical terms of hope, when you look at the word hope in the Bible, it usually always refers to the joyful anticipation of good. So it's linked to faith, okay? It's the joyful. So how many of you are joyful this afternoon? I'm slowly getting there after everything that happened to me today. It's the joyful anticipation, anticipation of good. Okay? So if we read that again, and rejoice, 
So it's already starting, starting out by rejoicing. Okay? That's something you do. Okay? When you know the benefits and the blessings of justification, you will always be rejoicing. Even when things go wrong. You catch that? See, when you know that I am right with God, I have access to God. Think of this too, the access. I'll go back to the word access by faith. And that is that before in the Old Testament, no one could go into the presence of God. No one had the access to go into the presence of God. You, 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 all of us here, we have a beautiful opportunity. Think about this. Because of justification, you are now made right with God. See, nobody was made right with God in the Old Testament. Only the high priest could go in there once a year. You can't go in there. You have no access. Now, you and I, every single day of our life, every minute, every second, every hour, we have beautiful, wonderful, perfect access into God's presence. Into who he is for us. Hebrews 4, 16, what does that say? We can approach the throne of grace. That means you can actually go to God and just say, God, I really need you right now. And I need your presence in my life. And I rejoice in that. See, that is something, that is, that is the benefit. That's the blessing of justification. Our biggest problem is right here. Okay? Because we've been trained against thinking this way. From childhood, through school, through whatever, you have to do things to be accepted or to have access to something. Correct? You have to pay for it to get access into the VIP section. Correct? The guy I look after, he, he went to the wrestling last night. He said it was fantastic, but he was like from here to the back window right there, away from the stage. He showed me pictures of it. I said, did that cost you a bit of money? He goes, yeah, that cost me a bit of money. But he's in a wheelchair, so he got a little bit of, bit of extra bonuses there. You know what I'm saying? But he had to pay for that to get access to get that close. Front row seats. Guess what? Every single one of you have access to the front row seats to the throne room of heaven. Every single one of you. Not because of anything you've done, only because you've accepted Christ into your life and asked him to forgive you of your sins. And you've been justified by him. Isn't that good? And that's what makes us rejoice. Also because we know there's a hope of something coming good to us. In this life and the life to come. We win both times. Y'all good? Rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Okay, move on. If you want to keep reading for me, Paul, if you can, I'll get you the next. Uh, Three verses. But we also glory in tribulation. Oh, no, we don't, do we? No, we Oh, don't tell me about this stuff. Keep going. And perseverance, character. Oh, good. And character, hope. Do I really want all that stuff? Read the next one. Verse 5. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit through His gifts to us. Amen. Let me say this. Um, this is actually a blessing of justification. This is another aspect. So we've got, what we have here is we have, have first of all, peace with God. 
We talked about the peace of God. We've been justified before God by faith, and that's what we, we, we have peace with God. You with that? Yes. Number two, we have access to God. You good with that? That means you can step right into his very presence. Just that blows my mind every time I think about that. God, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, I can step into his presence without getting fried. Without anything bad happening to me. Man, that's good news. Thirdly, we have a glorious hope. Peace with God takes care of the past. Can you say amen? Amen. We have peace with God because of the past. We have access to God. That takes care of our present day moments. Hope of the glory of God takes care of our future. Can you say amen? So I'm taking care of past, present, and future. My whole life is taken care of because of justification before God. Yeah? But this is also a blessing. So those three things are blessings, but this next one is also a blessing because it's, it's creating in me what's called character. Christian character. It's putting into me what I do what I need in every circumstance and every situation in life. Yes? So it's teaching me perseverance. Tribulations, we glory in tribulations. You know, maybe not immediately. (laughs) Okay, but, but we need to see past our own hurts being ticked off, being angry. We need to see the old man that is in us, that we're, we're not in us so much, but is actually a part of the habit of our life. Right? You've heard me say, we have a new nature in Christ Jesus. Behold, anyone who is in Christ Jesus is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. So we're not, we're not, we're, we're a new creation, we're not an old creation, correct? But our problem is we have a sin habit. Habits can be changed. We can, okay, all right, settle down. <laughs> so, so, was she pointing that at me? Whew, dear Lord. Well, praise the Lord for that, too. <laughs> what habits do I need to change, love? Anyhow, so, so nevertheless, <laughs> so nevertheless, this is not a counseling session for us right now, okay? Just settle down. Um, uh, <laughs> oh, dear Lord, you made me lose my thought of train. <laughs> Ooh, character. So habits can change. So, so, I mean, you're, you're, you, every time something goes wrong in your life, you, you can either go down that road or you can go down that road. Normally, we go down this road, whatever that may be. You become angry, you get ticked off, you become unforgiving, you can become bitter, you become twisted. Whatever that character, that character flaw in you, and sometimes it's an inherited thing or it's just something that you've learned from your upbringing. Can you say amen? It's a character flaw. Well, see, that's not, Christ, that's not Christ's image. I've heard, I've heard people in the old, years ago being burnt at the stake for their faith in Christ, and they're rejoicing. <laughs> We're rejoicing because we are able to be persecuted for our faith in Christ. I don't know if I would be doing that. That's amazing stuff. But what that does, and I've heard many times, read stuff on that type of thing, where these people being burnt at the stake for their faith in Christ, 
That's what it is. That's all it is. They've seen people have watched that and been converted because of their testimony. How can that person rejoice? How can that person be excited? How can that person glory in this? Because the image of Christ, the Christian character, Christ-like character is being produced in them. So that's why even tribulation, even trials, even difficulties, you will have difficulty. You will have trials in this world, Jesus says. Things will happen to us. Thank God, they, thank God we live in Australia. Medicine that we get, everything else that we get is unbelievable. There's countries in this world that, that don't have what we have. Just don't have what we have. This has nothing to do with water baptism, does it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Knowing that tribulation produces. You gonna hang in there? You gonna hang in there? I don't know about you, but sometimes when things happen to me on my birthday that aren't pleasant bit of a tribulation. I don't know. Sometimes I think, God, is this worth it? (sighs) Is is this Christian life worth it? You know, I mean, you know, God, you know, this happened to him, man. We can think like that, you know? We're struggling in our relationships with one another. We're struggling in this area. We're struggling in that area. And we can just easily just stop persevering. Stop. Yeah, chuck our arms up and do what? Swear. Yeah, give up. That's right. We, do, we can do that. And you know what? We've done that sometimes, haven't we? We've just gone, ah, oh, forget this thing. Following Jesus is like that. You know? But guess what? If you weren't following Jesus, you sometimes used to do that too. Uh, I don't need this anymore. I don't need him in my life. I don't need her. I don't need this. I don't need that. Perseverance is, is one of the greatest Christian character enhancements that you can ever have in your life. It's a stickability that says nothing. Stickability? That is my word. You can never use it for yourself. It's stickability. Can you say amen? Okay, turn to your neighbor. Stickability. 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 Yeah, yeah, Barry, wake up and stickability. Okay, okay, stick at it, stay to it. Where else are you going to go? Remember what I just said? We win now and we win then. We might lose occasionally here, but one day we're going to be with Jesus and nothing else is going to matter. All these tribulations, all this... For 60, 70, 80, 90 years, if you make it to 90, good on you. If you get there, praise God. That's fantastic. But if you get to that age without dying here, then you still win. That's why perseverance is so important. Because what it does is it changes you into the image of Christ. Because that's part of who he is. Did you know what? Aren't you glad that he persevered at the cross? Golly. Not my will, but your will be done. And hope. The joyful anticipation. Character. And character what? There that word is again. Hope. Okay, final verse again. I didn't get anybody else to read tonight, but verse 5 again. And not only that. But we also glory in tribulations, 
No, 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 five. Number five, sorry. Yep. Now, hope does not disappoint because it is the joyful anticipation of what? Good. Hope never disappoints. If you stay in hope, this is a great story. I'll share it in a minute. Because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Okay, hope never disappoints. Why? Because it's part of the love of God. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you so much that he will never, ever let you fall completely. Things go wrong, but he has you in his hands constantly. Has you in his hands. Because he's given us also the Holy Spirit. Can you say amen? That's good girls, good singing. Hope does not disappoint. The Bible says in Romans chapter 4, it speaks of a man by the name of Abraham. And I'm going to share this in closing. Uh, Abraham basically believed God for a child even past age. He persevered. And the Bible says that he hoped in hope. He held on to this promise of God that was given to him. He wavered a couple of times. Okay? But in the end, 25 years later, after he was given a promise from God that he would have an heir, a child, he hoped in hope. So I don't know what that means exactly, but he had anticipation for good. <laughs> Anticipation for good. And he stayed in joy concerning it. He praised God for it. He said, God, I don't know if this is ever going to change. And yet they struggled, and, but at the same time, he stayed in faith, believing that God was going to give him what God had promised to him. What's God promised to you? His love? Heaven as your home? Do we get too caught up here? Sometimes we do. Our homes, our possessions, our things, we get kind of caught up. And yet your soul, your, you, you here, is the most important thing. That lives forever. Amen? Glad you're saved? Amen. Amen. There's one final thought. Oh, no, I won't say it. I was tricking you, tricking you, tricking you, tricking you. Where's my phone? I put my phone. Oh, my wife has it. What's the time? 4.20. I think it's baptismal time. Does everybody know what baptism is? Yes. Well, Mel does, but nobody else does. <laughs> baptism is this glorious thing that we're just recognizing and we're remembering and we're acknowledging the fact that we've died with Christ. We've been buried with Christ. And we've been raised to new life. So when you go down, the old life is going. It remains in the water. Okay? And if you need to die a little bit more, we'll keep you down a little bit longer, Kingsley. Okay? Oh, we'll bring him up now. Yay! <laughs> and he's being raised in resurrection power. So he's a new creation. You say amen? amen? Hallelujah. So let's just pray. Can we pray right now? Father, we love you for today.
We thank you for your grace and your goodness. We know that most people here, I'm sure you're all saved here today, aren't you? You all saved? You love Jesus? If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, I'd love you to just slip up your hand and say, Pastor Steve, would you pray for me tonight, today? I would like to be justified. I'd like to be made right with God. I don't want to be at war with God anymore, but I want to be born again. I want to be saved. I want to be born again. And you slip up your hand and say, Pastor Steve, pray with me. I need Jesus in my life. Quickly raise your hand. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're all here. We're born again. We know Jesus. We've been justified by faith. And I pray, God, right now that you just seal this word upon every person's heart in this place. You'd help us all just to walk in your grace, walk in your goodness, that unmerited favor that you've bestowed upon us. Some of you today, I just feel, I feel, feel that what you need to begin to do is just declare over yourself with your own words. A few weeks ago, I spoke about your words and the power of your words. You need to start speaking over yourself that I am, I am, I am favored by God. You need to just start saying that. God favors me. I am favored at work. I am favored in life. I am his favorite. I live in the grace and goodness of God. You need to declare that over yourself every day. Just begin to declare that over yourself and say, you know what? I believe that I am in the grace of God. God has favored me. And he's power in giving me power to overcome every obstacle in this world. It's the empowering presence of God. And declare that over yourself. Begin to speak that over yourself. Life and death are in the power of the trunk, tongue. Begin to declare that over yourself and just say, you know what? I am the favorite of God. I am favored by God. He loves me. We go so quickly to the negative. And we need to not go to the negative. We need to go to the positive. We actually really do. Because this book is positive. <laughs> Everything we just read today is very positive. Can I just say that? Amen. Amen. So um, let's just, uh, uh, let's, I might pray over the food and everything so it's all done in one shot. How's that sound? <laughs> Father, we just pray for the food today. We pray, thank you for all the hands who prepared this food today. We just thank you for the fellowship that's to come and the water baptismal that's to come right now also in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. and amen. Hallelujah.